So today we're going to start talking about population ecology. Uh, we'll do just like a little intro today of what are some characteristics we look at. Um, and then what are some limiting factors? And then throughout the week, we're going to look at different types of population growth and um, what does that mean? What are the implications? Okay, what does that look like in the future? So today I want to start off with just looking at characteristics. So if an ecologist is interested in the population, um, they're going to be specifically interested in a couple different characteristics, such as density, the spatial distribution, um, the growth rate, maybe where this population is located. Okay. So uh, the first one is population density. Okay. So that is just the number of organisms per like a designated unit of area. Areas where you have more organisms in a population have a higher density. Um, other areas where you have fewer organisms have lower density. Okay. Um, so if you think about us compared to the United States, do we live in like a highly, like a densely populated area or low density? Okay, good. We're low density. Okay. Um, if you think maybe somewhere like a city, they have really high density. There's a lot of people in like a given area. Another characteristic ecologists look at is spatial distribution. Um, so that's like, what's the spacing between um, like organisms in that population? Are they uniform? Maybe think more of like vegetation or plants. Um, is it like every two feet you have something? Um, do they come together in groups? Or is it just random where there's no pattern? Okay. And then they also look at population ranges or the distribution. Uh, that is just like where specifically would you find this population on earth okay. uh, there's not a single population that occupies all the habitats on our planet okay. um, so populations settle down in areas where their adaptations thrive right if it's an area um, that you're not adapted for your population isn't going to settle down there so before you write this side down, let me ask you a question. As populations grow, do you think they're just going to keep on growing indefinitely or are there eventually going to be some sort of factor that limits the population growth? <coughs> okay, yeah, there's going to be factors that limit population growth. Okay, so today we're just going to introduce those factors. They could be biotic or abiotic. What does biotic mean? Okay, living, something has to do with living things. What about abiotic? Okay, non-living. Non uh, so the first one we're going to talk about are density independent factors. If they're independent of density, it means that they're not de dependent upon like how many members of a population you have. So these are going to be the abiotic factors. These are going to be um, like severe weather or some sort of, sort of natural phenomena. So think maybe like a forest fire. Um, severe weather, maybe like a tornado or a hurricane, maybe flooding or droughts. And can you see how those would limit populations, though? Like, if you had a big forest fire, is that for sure going to limit how big that population can get there? Yes. Yes. Good. All right. So then the other type of limiting factors are called density-dependent factors. These ones do depend on the number of members you have in a population. Um, these are also going to be biotic factors. They're meaning they're living things. So this could be like predation. It could be disease. It could be competition. And so let me give you some examples of how these ones could work. So let's look at disease. So the more densely populated um, your like, population is, the easier it is for disease to spread. Um, why do you think it's easier for disease to spread if your area is more densely populated? Okay, yeah, you're closer, right? Disease can just spread from one host to the next. So um, if you have more disease spreading, some type of organisms, you're going to die from that, right? So that's going to help limit your population growth. Okay. Um, we see this right now with COVID. Is anyone following, like, India in the news? Okay, so India is extremely densely populated, okay? And there it is just spreading like 400,000 people a day are getting it. <clears throat> so then somewhere like where we are, we're more spread out, right? It just doesn't transfer because we are able to have more space between us. Um, same thing goes 
for like other plants and animals. That's not just a human only factor. Another example is competition. Again, if you have a more densely um, populated area, there's gonna be more competition. So um, more than one species or organism competing for the same resource, not everyone's gonna win then, right? So if you aren't getting the resources you need, um, you're gonna die off and that too is gonna limit the population. And then again, I have an example of parasites and that's just like disease. So parasites can jump host to host if your hosts are actually physically closer. Um, so those help control the population as well.